your friend who wants to buy it? Oh, the woman who owns it. Oh. Good evening. Welcome to the Lowell Zoning Board of Appeals meeting for February 11th, 2019. Uh, matter of record, if you wish to speak tonight on behalf of the petition or in opposition to the petition, please enter your name, sign in. State your name and address for the public record. If you have a cell phone off, please place it on vibrate or turn it off. Moving forward under continued business, ZB 2019-1 for a variance at, by Spiral Skanaskos at 55 Robert Street, Section 5.1. We received a communication for a continuance to March 11th, 2019 from the petitioner. May have a motion for continuance. Yes, that, that, that's correct, Mr. Chairman. Uh, we're seeking another continuance on this. <clears throat> Following that initial meeting, the weather turned a, a little colder than expected, so we had a difficult time getting the soil samples to do the testing for the subsurface infiltration systems. Uh, and I took it upon myself to notify uh, some of the individuals who were here last time, uh, the Pawtuckaville citizens, as well as one of the other abutters, and we're also meeting with uh, uh, attorney uh, Joseph Claremont, who owns a house on Mount Hope Street on Wednesday, to go over that with him to make sure we have everything in order with the abutters and the uh, engineering department. So we're asking for this further continuance to March 11th. Very well. Thank you, Councilor. I always, as always, well prepared, and we appreciate your proactive uh, response to your follow-up continuance. Thank you. That being said, we have a motion. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I can make a motion on ZB 2019-1 for a variance on 55 Robert Street to continue the public hearing to March 11, 2019. May I have a second? I'll second the motion, Mr. Chairman. Roll call. Chairman Perrin. Uh, approve. Member March Peck. 11th. Uh, approve continuance. Member Callahan. Approve continuance. Member McCarthy. Approve continuance. Member Breer. Approval. Member Jamino. Uh, approve. Thank, Thank you, you. Council. Appreciate that. Moving on under new business, ZB 2019-2 for a variance. Emily and Matt Steinberg at 107 Endicott Street, Section 5.1. The applicant proposes to construct a one-story addition onto their existing single-family home at 107 Endicott Street. The home is in traditional neighborhood single-family TSF zoning district, and the addition requires variance approval under Section 5.1 for maximum floor area ratio and for any other relief required under the Lowell Zone Ordinance. Is the petitioner here this evening? Good evening, sir. Can you tell Good us evening. a little bit about your plan? I'm sorry? You could just tell us a little bit about your plan? Oh, yeah, sure. Thank you. Uh, Matt Steinberg, homeowner, 107 Endicott Street in Lowell. Um, we did put in the variance because we're looking to expand our home um, we have been in the city now for 16 years. I've grown up here. Um, we have two large boys. Um, we have uh, a large dog, and we're, we explored making changes to our basement to accommodate some, some space for our family, and that was unfeasible due to a load-bearing stairwell within the house. So we look to um, expand outward through adding this uh, room on the back of our house, demolishing our deck, um, and um, putting this room onto a deck in the back. Great. Appreciate that. Uh, we, ha we have your latest plan. Uh, did you receive a 
package from the city DPD on comments? Did you have a chance to review those? We did, yes. Did you have a chance to review those? Yes. Okay. All right. From what I gather from the um, Department of uh, Division of Elemental Services, they have no concerns with the proposed addition. All right, well, just making sure you had them yep, on record. We have it. Thank you. At this point, I'd like to open it up to the public. Anyone wishing to speak in favor? In favor? In favor. That portion of the public hearing is now closed. Anyone wishing to speak in opposition? In opposition? In opposition. That portion of the public hearing is now closed. I'd like to open it up to the board. Mark? I believe that the uh, proposed project fits neatly within the character of the neighborhood. And I, for one, hope that you are enjoying your new living space very soon. Thank you. Thank you, Mark. Dennis? Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I just have a couple of questions. But, um, uh, Patrick, um, this is a, a situation that we come across quite a bit where we have a uh, addition being proposed or a change um, on a property that doesn't meet zoning, that when you look at the surrounding properties, I think we're going to have a number of these tonight, actually, uh, you kind of wonder how um, zoning can have such a dense neighborhood, but then when we look at modifying an existing property, we have variances that we're looking for. Um, and so, um, I'm a little bit troubled by how we're meeting the definition of a variance here by um, the, the requirements that we're being asked to um, accept. Um, and I don't see in the petition how exactly you're expecting to. The, the, so, for instance, one of the requirements for the variance is that the site has um, uh, um, the, the site has uh, difficulty in, in meeting uh, uh, requirements of zoning, um, but your site is relatively square, uh, your lot. The, the topography is not really having any. So, so <laughs> I'm not sure if you can solve this, but um, I do know that um, this makes sense. <laughs> but the definition of a variance, it doesn't conform exactly or very neatly to the definition of a variance for the board to um, support and um, I don't know if that's something that zoning should be or, or, or the planning board should be the planning department should be looking at for zoning relief but um, I have a hard time saying no to this kind of proposal yet I don't see how it really is a clear stand for the board to accept with the definition of variance as, as tightly defined as it is yeah, I mean, I, I don't know how much I can add to that. I do think that there are portions of the zoning ordinance that perhaps could be updated. Um, you know, I do think Jared reflects in his comment memo other properties on the street that are similar in the situation. But that doesn't support the variance definition as far as meeting the requirements for a variance to be granted. Right, so there is a hardship you know, threshold in the variance criteria. Um, I do think that's for the board to kind of weigh, I suppose. Okay. Okay. I, I just don't want to be the board to be, or for myself to be supporting a motion that puts the city in jeopardy from a legal standpoint. And so that's where I guess I'm going with this. Um, and even, um, I do think what you're asking for makes a ton of sense. And, um, and I want to support it. And um, I agree with you that um, the neighboring properties have a similar situation already. So um, that's all I have. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Dennis. Sean? Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Uh, so I, I, I agree with Dennis that this makes sense uh, as far as the um, request of relief on this. Um, uh, Mr. Steinberg, did you, do, did you do the elevation plan yourself or did uh, the plan, no, that was our contractor. Oh, it was? Okay. Yeah. No, they just don't seem professionally done, but, I mean, they seem to be very nicely uh, put together, like just kind of on the paper. He's here, so you heard that comment. I was going gonna, I was, I was to give you uh, give you some props and put Thank it you. together. So, but, uh, no, but they, yeah, but, again, this, uh, this, does, uh, this does make sense uh, in, in this instance, and I wish you and your family the best of luck. So. Thank you. Thank you, Sean. Van? Um, I have no comments, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Van. Philip? 
Mr. Chair, I don't have any comment. Um, good luck. I think it's very important to improve your house, so it's good. Thank you. Thank you. So do you have the, uh, the comments of the board and the comments from the DPD? There are no, there are no stand back. We, we will address the, uh, the concerns at the end of the meeting. Um, it's not relative directly to your petition, but from a board standpoint, um, I'll discuss it at the open, opening remarks. So any other comments by the board? Concerns? That being said, may I have a motion? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'd like to make a motion on ZB 2019-2 for a variance under Section 5.1 on 107 Endicott Street. May I have a second? Second the motion. Roll call. Chairman Perrin. Approved. Member Peck. Approved. Member Callahan. Approved. Member McCarthy. Approved. Member Breer. Approval. Member Tamina. Approved. Mr. Steinberg, you've been approved. Uh, good luck over there and hope your boys stop growing. <laughs> Thank you. For, they won't. Thank you. Thanks. Have a good night. Moving forward under new business, ZB 2019-3 for a variance, Michael McGuire at 152 Jewett Street, section 5.1. The applicant proposes to construct a single family home at 152 Jewett Street. The proposed home is in traditional neighborhood single family TSF zoning district and requires variance approval under section 5.1 for minimum lot size, minimum lot area per dwelling, minimum frontage and maximum floor ratio and any other relief required under the local zoning ordinance. Good evening. Good evening. Good Tell evening. us a little bit about your project. Good evening, Attorney Catherine Flood here on behalf of Michael McGuire, who's here with me this evening. Um, our proposal is to um, tear down the current, current existing garage at 152 Jewett Street and construct a single family home on the lot. We are here requesting um, variance, variances pertaining to the construction. Um, as you can see with the application I submitted, you can see where there will be parking sufficient for two vehicles, as well as a um, floor plan for the existing home to be constructed on the lot. Thank you, Councilor. You knew uh, in receipt of the copy of the comments from the city? I have. Okay. That being said, anything else at this time? No, I've reviewed the comments. Everything seems to be um, positive. The only question that came up was regarding the asphalt on the lot in the front. He proposes to construct the home facing Richardson. Okay. Um, that asphalt will be pulled up and there will be grass there. The driveway will be to the right. Okay, thank you. This time I'd like to open up the public. Anyone wishing to speak in opposition? In opposition. Sure. Good, evening. Good evening. My name is Anne Marie Page. I reside at 26 Fremont Street in Lowell, and I sit on the executive board for the Centerville Neighborhood Action Group. I'm sorry, but the microphones need a little help. I'm just basically loud so you can hear me, but I did not hear everything the young lady said. I got part of it. What is the size of that lot right now? Councilor? 4,180 square feet. Thank you. Okay. Now, I realize there are many other houses on Jewett Street close to that size, but over in Centerville, we are kissing close. And there's not much more that we can take. And that is a small lot. That's why I believe zoning had changed it so it was 7,000 square feet to be, build a house in Centerville. This is a small lot. Very neat, very clean, well taken care of, but it's a small lot. Now you put a house on it, and then what if you have cars? It is a small lot. So I think you need to give it a close look. We depend on zoning board to follow the codes and Centerville was moved up to 7,000 square feet. So if we keep sticking houses in, and Jewett Street, they're close, they're very close. And a lot of houses in Centerville are very close. And I think that's why it was changed so we could spread apart a little bit. Thank you very much. Thank you, ma'am. Any others wishing to speak in opposition? Opposition, sir? 
Good evening. My Good name evening. Is, Good evening. My name is James Harrington. I live on Christian Street in Lowell, Mass. Um, I, too, am a member of the Board of Directors from the Centerville Neighborhood Organization. Um, I'm sure that when the Zoning Board put together the package that determined how large properties should be for construction of new houses, they took into consideration keeping the neighborhoods as their neighborhoods were. They did allow for minor, small variances or a means to get those small variances. Going from a 7,000 square foot zoning requirement to a 4,100 zoning uh, request is a little bit more than what should be allowed in that type of a zone. Along with that, the lot, I can't see being able to put a house on a lot that size and have off street parking. That area of Jewett Street and surrounding area is a very, very densely populated area where almost every family has multiple cars. They're on the, half of them are on the street. There are very few driveways in that area. We don't need to add more congestion in that section of the city. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Any others wishing to speak in opposition? In opposition? In opposition, that portion of public hearing is now closed. Anyone wishing to speak in favor? In favor? In favor, that portion of public hearing is now closed. I'd like to open it up to the board. Dennis? Uh, thank you, Through Mr. Chairman. I'd like to ask a couple of questions. Uh, the first one is um, how you um, expect the board to accept a 40% um, reduction in lot size. Um, what, what exactly the criteria is for us to grant the variance? Um, well, when I submitted my application as well as my narrative, I pointed out to the board the neighborhood and what, what the neighborhood appears as of now. Um, most of the properties within the neighborhood are on smaller lots than this lot as proposed. Um, some of them even have two family homes on them. So he owns the lot. To not allow him to develop the lot would be, um, it's a hardship for him based on the lot. I mean, the lot's a square lot, a house would fit perfectly in the middle with sufficient parking. I am um, trying to follow the word hardship here. The house, the lot is not a buildable lot as it Correct. stands today. As it stands today, yes. So why is it a hardship for it to become a buildable lot? Because I'm not sure if it's not a buildable lot, why, why is the city granting a variance to make it a buildable lot? So Mr. McGuire can do something with the lot. It would also bring tax revenue in. It would also beautify the neighborhood. A new home, new construction would look nice. Okay. All right. Um, let's move on to the next one. <laughs> so the, how, how did you end up with that size structure? It's um, giving us uh, roughly, you know, 15, 16 foot side yards around the building, around the structure. What, why, why is it um, 28 by 30, 38? This structure was um, to meet setback requirements. Okay. It was built within the footprint of the setback requirements. Right. Okay. That's how we came with the size of the structure. Um, Michael spoke with the architect. Um, Gavin and Sullivan, and they designed the plan for him. Right. And then you have a two-car parking, off-street parking, which is lovely. Um, the site plan doesn't show walkways or decks, at least not the site plan that I have in front of me. Jeez. Is there a site plan that should be showing a front walk to the front door or a... Um, access to a uh, rear glass doors for uh, outdoor patio or deck? I don't have a site plan showing that, but um, Michael can probably answer it for you. Is, is it your intent to have a walkway to the front door? I imagine that yes. would be. Yeah, there will be, absolutely. And would it be your intent? No, this isn't a site plan. It's just the elevation plan of the proposed building. Well. I think 
for, for informational purposes, we should see whatever is green space and what is hardscape on the site plan, and we should understand exactly what your intent is for access to the structure. So I'm expecting that anything that's not shown as building footprint or our driveway is available for landscaping and um, pervious material. So I would, I would like to make it a condition if this were to go forward that the um, applicant submit a site plan showing all hardscape walkways um, and patios. Sure, that can be done. Um, it's a significant variance and so I'd also like to see a landscape plan. Um, has one been developed? Not as of yet, no. Um, I love your comment about it beautifying the neighborhood, but I think we're removing some trees maybe? No? No. There's no trees on the lot? Trees. There are a couple of trees on the lot. I'm hoping to keep them there. We may have to trim some limbs back. But okay, so I'm hoping I, not to remove the trees. So let's as a, if we were to go forward to have a condition to develop a site plan, a landscape plan showing shrubs and trees with the intent of keeping as many mature trees as possible, I think. That's sure. acceptable. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Um, I, I'm still struggling with the whole definition of a variance for this lot since it's not defined as a buildable lot today and you're asking for it to become one. Um, but um, I like the project, so I don't know what to say. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Dennis. Sean? Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I, for one, agree with Dennis. I'd like to see a, at least a site plan um, showing what the landscape plan is as well as the hardscape would be. Um, and uh, Patrick, it's, I'm just kind of curious because this is a corner lot. Is there any? There's there's no other issues with regards to other uh, you know, dimensional requirements because you know, you're, you're, normally we have a corner lot. It's it, you got to take in both both sides of the. Yeah. So corner lots have two fronts and two sides, um, and this plan does meet that those dimensional standards. Okay. But, um, and the the parking. Is, is it stacked parking? Is that what the, that's what the uh, is being planned? As far as the, yes. the uh, driveway is concerned? Yes. Okay. Um, yeah. That's yeah. My concern is kind of similar to Dennis as far as I'd like to see you know, how the how the layout's going to be as far as the walkways, any other hardscape, any stone patios, uh, and landscaping would be. But uh, those are the that's the only concern I have at this point right now. So thanks. Thank you, Sean. Ben? Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, to, to you, uh, Mr. McGuire or Ms. Flood, um, do you get a chance to talk to uh, the neighborhood at all about um, just the, the development or the, the single family home that you're, you're planning to build on Jewel Street? I didn't have any contact from anyone after the notifications um, went out. Um, Michael owns some property on Jewel Street. I don't know if he's had any contact. I haven't spoken to any of the neighbors about it. Okay. Um, I mean, it, it is concerning to me um, uh, when the neighbors, you know, um, have some some reservations. I think it's always good when we can, you know, um, uh, add on or beautify neighborhood. Um, but in this case, um, you are also lacking some some material, the site plan, uh, landscape plan. Um, I think, in, in my opinion, I'd like to see this maybe continue until uh, we could have those documents um, develop, and um, maybe during that process, um, if you, Mr. McGuire or Ms. Flood, can meet with the neighborhood group to, to help alleviate some of their concerns they have. Um, but those, those are just my comments. Um, you know, you do as you wish. It's, it's your project. Um, those are the comments I have, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Thank you, Ben Phillip. <clears throat> Yeah, Mr. Chair, I just have a, a few questions for um, you. Sorry for that. Um, what is the need for building the house? Is it for you to move in or? It's not, no. So I would be selling it. 
you sell it. You just want to be there and sell it. Yes. But she, she's saying she's trying to beautify the place. I thought she wants she wants to move in. Um, so how do you arrange about trash issue? How are you going to do it? I mean, do you have a if you're going to erect uh, a new building, you have to have trash for it and all the rest. What do you intend to do? Trash removal during construction. I mean, do you going to buy? You just going to get a containers, put it by the side, or something like that? Yeah, there'd be a roll-off dumpster there for any debris. Yeah. I'm, I'm just thinking you're asking too much from us. Um, basically, you're asking us to give you a variance of 2,820 square feet. Um, but it's for us to have a sound uh, decision, probably we should see the plan and how you're going to do it. I think that's my comment. So, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Philip. So, Mark. Mr. Chairman, is it permissible for me to question uh, those who rose in opposition to this petition? Certainly. Could I speak with uh, Anne Marie Page, please? Page, if you, if you would. Member Breer has a question he'd be willing to answer. I didn't hear what you said, sir. Ms. I'm old and I'm going deaf, I think. Member Breer has a question he'd like to yes, direct Mr. you Breer. away. With respect to your position with the Centerville Neighborhood Organization, what do you believe is the most detrimental? To our neighborhood? Part of this project, yes. We've got houses kissing close. We always have. I know. I grew up but in We can't I, have any more kissing close. I'm, I'm, I'm just now we have automobiles. Years ago we didn't. No, in the interest of fairness, I grew up in Lower Center. I know you did. Put your hand out the window and shake hands with the guy next door. Now we know how old you are. We've always had parking problems. We've always had these issues. Why would the neighborhood organization be against a new structure in that neighborhood that will bring in more tax revenue that's consistent with the neighborhood as it's presently constructed. Because Why it, would you be opposed to that? It's too close now. And um, my question would be back to you. Why did zoning change it from 4,000 up to 7,000? And if we were in Belvedere, it would be 10,000. But in Centerville, it's 7,000. So if you decided, using all your professional advice from builders and others, 7,000 is where we play the game. We can't keep knocking it back down to four. It is too bad because the garage is beautiful, well built, neat and clean. The property is neat and clean. It's a beautiful piece of property. It's just too tiny. I would hope that one of the abutters would want to buy it. And then they would have a nice big yard or more room to put their cars. We're too tight over in Centerville. It's too close and we can't take much more. Well then, it seems to me that I, I wasn't part of the process with, to change the code. So, and I understand we have right. to follow, we have to follow at 7,000 square feet. Where in Lower Centerville would you be able to build a house if we were using 7,000 square feet? Not be, very no, many. No, 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 no. no more new construction. Not unless the house burns down. And we've had that happen. The, the, the gentleman in the rear one. Excuse me, excuse me, excuse me, sir, sir, please, if you. Unless you start to take some of the school property and some of the parks. That's about I, the only thing that's got open land. Prior, prior to moving, prior to moving on in this conversation, it was requested by Member Briere to have a question and answer session with the board of Senable. To remain quorum, we will, we will move forward with your question, sir, but we will do it from the podium and we'll do it in a professional manner. Mr. Briere. I believe you had to you comment. asked a question about a piece of property in Lower Centerville that may make the 7,000 square foot uh, area. 
there's a piece of property on Hildreth Street right now, probably pretty close to the corner of Hildreth and Colburn, that I have seen a, a backhoe in there clearing this lot, and there's no question in my mind somebody's about to build a house there. So there are pieces of property in and around Lower Centival that are going to make the 7000 My comment wasn't that there aren't properties, but there are not many. They're minimal. We're never going to have a new structure in Lower Centival ever again if we're, if we're going to be strictly adhered to this. It's got a well, nice piece only, of property. It's not only Lower Centival. There are other parts of Centival that well, fall tonight, into that same category. Tonight we're talking about Lower Centival. So let's just stick to that issue. I thought we were sticking to the 7,000 square foot issue. Well, that's what I have a problem with. I understand that's the cold, but I think that this hey. proposal fits neatly within the character of that neighborhood. Does not propose any additional parking problems that don't already exist. And I just don't understand why the, uh, the neighborhood organization, well, I do understand. They don't want that, that close proximity, but let's face it, that's our, that's our neighborhood. That's the character of it. And do, do we really think we're going to change the overall character by denying these, these new properties to be built and bringing in additional tax revenue? How does that? If you keep continually making the lot smaller than what's required by your code that was established by the zoning board in the city of Lowell, yeah, well, there's going to be major problems. My with, point is there are so It's so, so few, congested now. My point is that there are so few lots that could be changed, it's not going to make any difference to the character of the neighborhood. I'm only asking, I'm, I'm, please, I, if I sound confrontational, that's not my, what I'm trying to do. I'm only trying to find out what those who are most active in the neighborhood are trying to do for the neighborhood. What's your thinking? What's your motivation behind this? I don't get it. I don't agree with it. Okay, you have the right to disagree. No, I, I, and, and you're entitled to your right. Correct. Right. Thank you. But I think we should be promoting the interest of the neighborhood, and I think the new construction and new tax revenue is better for the neighborhood than limiting this and, and limiting new structures and, and, and beautifying neighborhoods. I think that's what we should be doing in the Centerville neighborhood. I'm not telling you how you do your business, but as you know, I'm, I'm equally active in the Centerville neighborhood representing the East End Social Club, but I've been through these fights for many years, and I often scratch my head when I don't see a single abutter here from Lower Central opposing this project, yet the neighborhood organization, which gives the impression that they speak for the entire section of the city, when they, in fact, they don't. So I want everyone to know where you're coming from when the guys that live next door aren't here to oppose it. So why would you oppose it? That's, that's basically what I'm asking. Let's just agree to disagree. I don't agree that you have, you know, I don't agree that we should deny new construction. We, uh, we are going to move on. Mr. Breer has had his moment for conversation and uh, question and answer, and I appreciate you. However, this would just become a back and forth, and we're not here for that. We're here for the Zoning Board of Appeals. Um, you've, heard, you've heard the concerns. Uh, I would recommend we move a continuance to submit a new site plan, a landscape plan, and perhaps have an opportunity to speak to the neighborhood group. Uh, several of the board members and Vice Chairman Peck has, has concerns about those plans. Um, our next meeting is February 25th. Would you be able to have those plans submitted by then, Councilor? I should be able to. Yes, I think so. So it would be an updated site plan. Dennis? Through Mr. Chairman, I'd like to, because I'd like to make requests, uh, to follow the re requirements of the um, submission process and include grading. On that, um, on that, and, and then establish a finished floor elevation so we know exactly how much exposed foundation wall we are be looking at. If you could. So you want a site plan, landscape plan with grading and finished floor elevation. Right, and so the um, requirement for site plan uh, submission includes a, a topo or a graded plan that shows um, the contours of the lot. Okay as well as a landscape plan brought forth by Vice Chair. And, and hardscape as well. As well as a hardscape plan, what you're going to be doing. Walkways. The walkway entrance. Patios, yeah. yep. Parking. Any other comments or concerns of the board? I just have one, Mr. Chairman. Um, I, uh, 
I just want to reiterate, uh, Mr. McGuire and Ms. Flood, if, if um, for the next meeting, uh, just please reach out to, to all the neighbors, the neighborhood group, the people here tonight. I think it'll go a long way to helping your project um, if you have more buy-in. So if you can get those plans and, and, and meet with the neighborhoods, I, I think it'll be in your best interest. So I just want to add that, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Thank you. Any other comments for the board? Yeah. Mr. I want the I want the members of the neighborhood organization to realize that I have not rendered any final judgment on this. Even though I, I've stated my, my disagreement with you publicly, uh, I think the, it would serve the petitioner greatly if we had abutters who would come here in support or, you know, we, we need to hear from them. Uh, because I think if you had abutters that were against this petition, then that lends some credibility to what the neighborhood organization is saying. However, the abutters feel that this fits in within the character of the neighborhood, then I tend to believe that maybe my comments are more accurate. That's my advice. Thank you. So we, we are in agreement of a continuance until February 25th with the submittal of the required plans as stated. Are you agree to that, Councilor? Yes. yes. Mr. Mr. McGuire? Very well. Yep. Thank you. That being said, may I have a motion? Mr. Chairman, I can make a motion on ZB 2019-2, oh, sorry, excuse me, 2019-3, 152 Jewett Street, to continue the public hearing to February 25th, 2019. May I have a second? A second the motion, Mr. Chairman. Roll call, please. Chairman Perrin. Continue to February 25th. Member Peck. Uh, approve continuance. Member Callahan. Continue to February 25th. Member McCarthy. Continue to February 25th. Member Breer. Approve continuance. Member Jamia. Approve continuance. Thank you. We appreciate your time and thank you to the public and the residents thank for coming you. out this evening. Also be aware there will not be a public notice for the continuance. The public notice is this meeting. Moving on to the new business, ZB 2019-4 for a variance. Kronos Inc. at 900 Chempson Street, Section 6.3. The applicant proposes to install a temporary 20 foot by 56 wall sign to be installed on the facade of the building. The subject property is in the high rise commercial HRC zoning district. The applicant is seeking variance under Section 6.3.4, number 18D of the Lowell Zoning Ordinance and any other relief that is required. Good evening, sir. Good evening, uh, Mr. Chairman and members. My name is Jonathan Prophet, and I work at Kronos 900 Chelmsford Street in Lowell, Mass. Uh, as you may know, we moved into Cross Point Towers a couple of years ago. We relocated from Chelmsford, and we, uh, in doing so, we invested over $50 million into the building. We were fortunate enough uh, earlier this year to be named the uh, top place to work in Massachusetts. We feel a big part of that has to do with our relocation to Lowell, and we're very proud of that. And we want to celebrate that not only with our employees, but with the, with the city of Lowell. We think it's very important to uh, help us continue to grow, grow our business, which you know, helps us stay in Lowell and continue to grow in the building. In fact, we're, we have a, about a $3 million renovation underway right now where we're building out another floor in the building, and we anticipate doing yet another floor uh, early next year for maybe another three or four million dollars. So we continue to invest in the community, invest in the business. As part of sharing this news and erecting a sign, the unique characteristics of the building, being that it's very far off the road and quite a tall building, the tallest around, makes it the only way we can really uh, erect a sign is to put it at the rooftop. And in order to put it to the rooftop and see that, it has to be quite a large sign. So we don't feel like it's detrimental to the neighborhood. In fact, we think it's great to, again, celebrate what a a great accomplishment to have the number one workplace in all of Massachusetts. I will say that our original submittals on the sign said the top place to work in Boston, but uh, the sign, and I have an example of that, I can share it with Mr. Burns, and he can show the board. It's exactly the same sign. Would you like me to share this? Or no? It's exactly the same sign, but it's a broader statement that it's the best place to work in Massachusetts, not just Boston.
Thank you. I, I do agree that it does uh, does involve and enwrap more of the more of the community because you you are reaching um, the surrounding communities as well over in that property. So I think that's a that's a nice addition. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. At this point, I'd like to open it up to the public. Anyone wishing to speak in favor? In favor? In favor. That portion of public hearing is now closed. Anyone wishing to speak in opposition? In opposition? In opposition. That portion of public hearing is now closed. I'd like to open up to the board. Sean. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, this is a no-brainer. I was going to give you a hard time about the fact they said the number one work, uh, workplace in Boston, and we're not in Boston. So you do that one. Uh, just Fortunately. like to promote, but uh, no, it's a, it, it makes uh, it makes perfect sense. I'm glad that Kronos is, uh, you know, just growing and expanding, and you know, just uh, it's a great been a great boon to the city, and I wish you the best of luck. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Sean. Van. Uh, I have no comments, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Van. Philip. No comments, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, sir. Mark. Well, it was very fortunate to have you. I agree that we should be celebrating. If it was up to me, you could put a movie screen up there. Congratulations. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Mark. Dennis? Uh, through you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I, I, too, am quite um, impressed by what you've done with that building um, and the caliber of um, people you have working for you there. Um, it's 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 a true testament uh, to you as a company that um, you're, you've been able to get that designation, and I'd love to see that you know uh, expressed uh, on the building for everyone to see. Um, how many square feet do you have in the building right now? Uh, we're over five hundred thousand now, so and, well, and five hundred and three thousand. And you're growing. We are growing. We uh, we we have about four hundred open jobs right now. Wow. And we, you know, we we are uh, we continue to grow. We're a private company, but we publicize our, our earnings every quarter. And we just had uh, we just closed the best quarter of our ever. So uh, continues to be great. The city has been wonderful to us. We look forward to continuing the partnership. Well, we are grateful. At least I am extremely grateful that you've chosen Lowell as your headquarters and. Um, and the city should continue to be wonderful because you're a great company and a great asset for us to all um, celebrate here. And um, thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Dennis. Mr. Prophet, I, I, I do appreciate your time coming out and, and presenting tonight. Uh, since the inception of this project uh, with Kronos coming to Lowell, working with the city administration and, and our delegate, your, your business staff, um, property manager and owner of that building, uh, it's been a, it's been the model for partnerships in growing, um, growing an economy, enlarging our population of employees within uh, that now shop in Lowell and Chempsford and the surrounding towns, uh, and they they come here that they they visit our our venues within the city. Um, you've enveloped an atmosphere over there um, that has enriched everyone that encompasses Kronos. And it's a credit to what you're doing. Um, this board is, is certainly uh, on your side. Um, this is a, is a great kudos, not only to Kronos, who is the leader in this, but to everyone involved. And to, to share that with you uh, in the city, um, in our city's high rise at Cross Point. Uh, anyone who's lived in Lowell, lived in the surrounding city, um, the pains we've gone through with that, with that building, uh, the celebrations we've gone through that building, we are now at the pinnacle uh, because of what Kronos has brought to you with your team and all your, your employees and everyone over there. So I think this is, is wonderful. Uh, always look at the positive of things and to celebrate this and have that sign up there for all to see coming up and down the, the major corridors uh, is truly um, a congratulations to you and all your staff over there. And we thank you for choosing Lowell and sharing in this this partnership and your growth. Thank you, Mr. Thank Chairman. You. Any other comments of the board? Okay. I know it was indicated it would be a temporary sign. I'm just curious how long the applicant feels that they intend to have it up on the building. Forever? Good question. <laughs> so, is, there a, is there a time length? I mean, sure. this through, is a um, unique situation for the board? Sure. Through Mr. Chairman to uh, Mr. Burns, the, the awards are given out annually. And I believe it's in January. So uh, 
unless we're fortunate, or should I say hopefully we'll, we will be fortunate enough next year to get it again, we can leave it up to uh, Chairman Perrin's comments, but I, I think through January would be a reasonable time frame if, you, if the board would allow, if they feel like they need, but. Thank you. Um, I have I have no concern of putting a timestamp on this. I, I agree with with the uh, with that. Is there any any disregard for Mr. Profit's request? No. I, a year long celebration is is fine with this board, and I'm sure it'll be fine with the city and its residents. Well, so. I, would, I would guess that that means you got to keep uh, keep on going every single year, and that's right. That's number right. one every single year until uh, until such time. So it's like the Patriots. There so. you go. Let's keep building. That being said, may I have a motion? Uh, one, one quick question, Mr. Chairman. Sure. Uh, so, Patrick, do we have to now add a condition that we have new plans add the condition because it changes the sign from Boston to Mass, or is that something that's, uh, or do we have to? Yeah, we should just maybe condition the, the revised rendering submitted today. Okay. There's no, uh, obviously, no, uh, no concerns about that. No, sir. So, okay. okay, so uh, with that, Mr. Chairman, uh, through you. I'd like to make a motion on ZB 2019 4 for variance under section 6.3 of 900 Chumpson Street for the installation of a temporary signage with the condition that uh, it's accepting the plans that were submitted uh, today. Right. Yeah, I don't have them in front of oh. me, but if they're dated, I would just use that date uh, as a reference. Dated uh, January 30th, 2019. I'll sign this one into record, okay. Mr. Clerk. May I have a second? Second the motion. Have a roll call, please. Chairman Perrin. Uh, approve with submittal. Member Peck. Uh, approve. Member Callahan. Approve with submittal. Member McCarthy. Approve with condition. Member Breer. Approval. Member Jamino. Uh, approved. So probably you've been you've been approved. We appreciate your time and effort. Thank you very much. Thank you. Appreciate it. Have Thank a you. great night. Thank you. See you later. Right. Moving on to new business, ZB 2000 dash. 2019-5 for variance and pawnery at 31 Robin Street. Section 5.1, the applicant proposes to construct a two-story addition onto the existing two-family home at 31 Robin Street. The home is a traditional neighborhood single-family TSF zoning district, and the addition requires variance approval under Section 5.1 for maximum floor area ratio and for any other relief required under the low zoning ordinance. Is the petitioner here this evening? Get a condition. Good evening. Hi. Good evening. Can you tell, tell us a little bit about your project? Uh, um, I want to add uh, rooms, two more rooms, um, into the Dalo uh, Dagi single house. Uh, two family. Uh, it's a two family, and then I would like to add two more rooms. Could you just speak into the microphone? Just state your name for the record. I'm sorry. Yes, uh, my name is Wendy Che. Um, I will be client for him okay, this evening. Okay, great. Thank you very much. Mm. Um, 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 I would like to um, build two new rooms into the uh, existing two-family uh, home. Yes. Is that all you wish to speak about? Yeah, I um, yeah, I just uh, would like to have two room added and and a bathroom, a full bathroom added. Okay, and you uh, are you in receipt, sir, of the comments from the city? Um, would you please repeat? Uh, the Department of Planning and Development had sent, made, sent written comments on your petition. Are you, did you receive those? There are comments that I emailed you on um, last Wednesday. Mm -hmm. 
I'm sorry, I have not seen an email. Uh, he just showed me right now, so I'm looking at it right now. So, the, you, the city had emailed a, a, a set of comments that are real questions relative to your petition. Um, if you haven't had an opportunity to read them, I think it's going to be it's going to be difficult to to answer them, answer the questions. Um, and then the other question I have is: um, Was the is the builder was the builder available to come to this meeting? For the petitioner? No. No, he wasn't available. No, he's not. Is he not available at all, or would he be available at another time? Yes. Okay. I, I would just I would just caution you at this point that where you don't have a copy of the comments um, for us to discuss, um, and generally, if, if the builder who made the plans is here, it's easier for us to ask questions. So um, that would be a concern. Because in, in fairness to the petitioner, if he does not have a copy of the written comments in front of him, it's, it's difficult for the board to ask questions and get the appropriate answers because he doesn't have those questions. The comments strike. ຈະດັ່ງໃຫ້ກະຈອງໃຫຍ່ຖ້າໄປປູ່ດັກສົມດັ່ງໃຫ້ບີອັນສາດໄມ່ດັກຕົບດັກຜົນໃຫ້
5-7 East Merrimack Street. We have a minor modification. The proponent is requesting a minor modification to the previously approved mixed-use building. The proposed changes include reducing the height of the building from 12 to 5 stories, the number of dwelling units from 66 to 42, and the size of the restaurant from 4,270 square feet to 915 square feet. Good evening. Good, good evening, Chairman and uh, members of the How board. How are you tonight? Um, I'm Matt Hammer with Lamplex Engineering, 10 George Street, Lowell, here on behalf of One Riverfront LLC. Um, here this evening to request a uh, minor modification to the original, uh, for the previously issued uh, permit uh, by the Zoning Board of Appeals uh, this evening and also to uh, request an extension to that very permit that was previously issued this evening. Um, to give you an update as to um, where we are right now, um, we just uh, went through the planning board um, meeting last week. Uh, they issued a um, determination that this did qualify as a minor modification from their standpoint in regard to the special permit that was issued from the planning board. And now we're here before the Zoning Board of Appeals to make a similar request. So the, um, the project uh, languished on for a little bit um, in the way that the, the original proposal was a much taller building. Um, it was just a, um, um, a building that, in the end, um, Mr. Uh, Daly from One Riverfront uh, decided to go with a five-story building. Um, it'll be a podium construction uh, building. It will be mixed use. Um, and this is the building here. I gave packets out to all the board members. It's going to have a, a ground floor here, which will have a mixed use with some residential uh, and a coffee shop uh, in an exercise room. There's a floor plan in the, in the drawing set that I gave you. And then there's going to be four stories of living space. Um, the, uh, the units, the number of units has been reduced from 66 down to 42. Uh, and as I said, the stories is reduced from 12 to five stories. Uh, the roof is going to have a, um, uh, a green design element to it where there's going to be a open plaza on the roof. That's also, uh, on the sheets that I, that I provided everyone, will there be a patio space and some quality uh, open space on the roof of this structure? This is a view uh, from East Merrimack. This is a plaza area here um, to be uh, commonly used by the, the residents as well as the folks in the coffee shop and obviously in the, the nicer days of the year. And the coffee shop is going to be positioned on this end unit towards East Merrimack. Um, as far as uh, you know, the, the, the full engineering for the project will go through uh, DPD and all the, um, the uh, municip municipalities of jurisdiction, the water department, sewer department, engineering department, Department of Public Works. Um, and this is the proposed design, uh, this different um, elevation views of the design that are in your packet. We've also, um, since the last meeting, has we've removed that existing structure and stabilized that whole area, and it's been fenced off, and the, the area has been stabilized so that we've removed the entire existing structure and got rid of that um, since, the, since the prior approval. And I can... Leave it to the board with any questions you may have. Thank you very much. Appreciate that. At this point, I'd like to move to a uh, public meeting. Open for anyone wishing to speak in favor. In favor. In favor. That portion of public hearing is now closed. Anyone wishing to speak in opposition? In opposition. In opposition. That portion of public hearing is now closed. I'd like to open it up to the board. Van. Uh, through you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I, I, think, I think this is still an amazing project. 
um, and the modifications you're asking for, Mr. Hammer, um, it's, I have no issues with. Um, I, I think we're lucky to have this um, development in the city, so uh, I'm, I'm all for it. So best of luck, Mr. Hammer. Thank you. Thank you, Van Phillip. Yeah, um, the only question is, I mean, it's a good uh, project. Uh, why did you reduce the dwelling place? Uh, economics, um, the 12-story the building is a, a much different structure to construct, a lot mm -hmm. more expensive. Um, you just get into a full steel uh, rated construction. Uh, I know Ms. McCarthy knows a lot about that. Uh, I, I won't be able to tell you the details of that, but this is going to be considered uh, podium style construction. Uh, where the first story, it's my understanding, is a steel frame in order to hold uh, four uh, wood story, uh, wood construction stories on, above. Even though it won't look like wood when you see this elevation, there will be wood underlain within the building itself. So it's more, so it's, it's, it's more, it's, it's an easier building to build, uh, less time frame, um, more within the means of the client, and um, He's scheduled to start this this summer. Okay. All right. Okay. Thank you. Just wanted to know. It's, it's not st a structural issue. Thank you. Yep. You're welcome. Thank you, Philip. Mark? Thank you, Mark Dennis. Uh, three, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I, I just have a couple of questions, but I agree with uh, Mark that I think that uh, this will be a great project. I, I kind of like the idea of it not being 12 stories, frankly. <laughs> I know that I shouldn't say that, but um, it just feels like it's uh, an easier um, uh, uh, piece to, to see fit into the city. Um, uh, can you just tell me what uh, the parking scenario is sure. for these units now? Yes, yeah, so we have a, a full parking agreement uh, with the City of Lowell to accommodate the total spaces that would be required for this. Uh, we have a parking garage um, at the uh, Lower Locks uh, parking garage off of Warren Street as well as the John Street garage as well. And there's, um, so we have a parking agreement to use, utilize either one of those two garages. As, as development has taken place since this was approved, we are seeing garages, I think, being a little more um, um, filled up uh, with, with uh, um, parking requirements that we've kind of granted over that time frame. How, how many years back was it? Was it one or two years? That was in uh, 2017. Uh, okay. The, the original permit? So yes. We, yeah, we yep. had the, so the original permit if you go to the decision, um, was filed on um, March 8th of 2017. I actually noticed a typo on the actual permit itself. It says 2007 on it, but it was 2017. I, I would just um, like to see a condition that uh, DPD or, or somebody from the city weigh in on the availability of those. What would it be one space per unit that would be required? Is it? Or is it two? Um, this is DMU or two, UMU? It's two per unit. Okay, then it's two per unit. Right. Um, just to um, make sure that we're still on track with uh, our available parking in these garages um, two years later. But um, I'm, I'm, I'm quite happy that something is being planned still on that site, um, and I fully support it. Thank you. Thank you, Dennis. Sean. Uh, thank you, three, Mr. Chairman. Patrick, I think. When this first came before us, I think the parking wasn't much of an issue because the Davidson parking lot is a city city owned uh, lot, and they, they were covered under that um, that uh, scenario, right? Yes, that's correct. So, but, okay, uh, yeah, I'm, I was in sort of support of the project the last time. I think I made like I told Mr. Daly, it was a very wonderful, great project, very ambitious. As I think I might have said, but uh, it still fit the fit the character and the neighborhood, and was uh, happy to see it come before us. Uh, it's scaled down, and quite frankly, it's still. I, I like I like it a little better when it's scaled down. Twelve feet, <laughs> twelve twelve stories. Uh, like I said, very ambitious, but if you can 
scale down. If you can scale down, it um, still fits the. Uh, I think it still fits it a little better. So I'm in, I'm in support of this, and I wish uh, wish them the best of luck. So thank you. Thank you, Sean. Uh, so as it relates to the extension, Patrick, that'll be part of the vote. Yeah. So you want to have a separate motion for an extension of the special permit. Okay. In addition to the modification request and okay. the changes. There'll be two votes. Or yeah, Mr. Chair, I have a. Uh, Philip, you have a question. Uh, so, Patrick, um, although he says um, it's a minor change, I think it's a big change from 66 to 42. Does he have to do any other application, or even though it fits, it doesn't matter? So that's for the board to decide. That's um, why it's here tonight. So the board's deciding whether the change is a substantial um, change from the original approval. I mean, it is decreasing in nature, um, the number of units. Um, so just for the sake of consistency, like, for instance, the planning board um, made a motion that it was not a substantial change. They approved the changes that were made, and then they issued an extension of the site plan review. So we should, two, should we, two votes or three, like one to, one, to, one to state that it's not a substantial change, one for the modification, and then one for the, one for the extension. So three votes. Okay. So it be being it that it's a a reduction yeah. in in a build uh, and deemed a minor modification. Uh, is there any board member that is conditioning a new application? Uh, are we fine moving forward with the minor modification for vote? The, the only thing I, I didn't see anything from the city stating that the. Uh, two years out that the uh, capacity in the garages is still there for the um, 80 spaces that we're looking at? Is it 84 yeah, spaces? I, I know that Mr. Daly had uh, spoken uh, at the planning board meeting that he was currently uh, finalizing the agreement with the city. I know that it's been verbally approved by the city, uh, but the, the official final documents have not, but that was stated at the uh, planning board meeting by Mr. Daly himself. Uh, is that good enough? I, I don't know. Is that yeah, I mean, you could, you know, condition that, that finalizing those parking yeah. agreement, that you could do that. But, um, yeah, it was, there was a parking agreement in place that was allowing a lot more parking on the city's part. So now it's, it requ the project requires less because it's yep. so scaled down. Okay. So condition parking. We just condition a parking plan with the TP, work sure. with TPD on the parking plan. If you choose to. We can just condition that you just get an update of the parking plan as approved with and uh, agreed through uh, the petitioner in the city. So we'll have, uh, is there any board members that re wants to require a new application? I, I'm in favor of accepting this as a minor modification as it came through the planning board. It's overall, okay. Agreed. So we'll accept this as a minor modification with no new application. Um, with the conditions to be read by the clerk, and we will take three motions. May I have one? For the, for the condition, just want to make sure we're clear, the condition for all three is going to be work with TPD to um, a parking plan based on, modificate based on the, the modifications, correct? That, that would be the way to? Yeah, I mean, yes, yes. So, all right. Mr. Amor, obviously in agreement with that, right? Yes. Yeah, so, okay. So uh, with three, Mr. Chairman, uh, first uh, motion, is there, is there a, uh, you know, a ZB number I'm supposed to be citing on this or just, because uh, this, this is on question, the prior. Actually, I do have it. Yeah. Okay. It's um, ZB-2017-06. Zero six. Thank you, Mr. Tamara. Okay. Um, first vote on ZB 2017 06 for 157 East Merrimack Street. Uh, the first motion is to accept, well, accept that this is uh, not a substantial minor modification. It's, it's a minor modification. Yes. Yeah. Basically, your changes are not substantial in that it is a minor modification. Changes are not substantial, and this is a minor modification of the prior uh, order of the zoning board with the, with the previous mentioned condition. May I have a second? Second. I'll second that. Roll call. Chairman Perrin. Approved modification. Member Peck. 
Uh, approve modification. Modification. Callahan. Approve modification. Member McCarthy. Approve modification. Member Briere. Approve modification. And Member Jamina. Approve modification. We have another second motion. Uh, Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'd like to make a motion again on ZB 2017-0601-5-7 Merrimack Street. For uh, the next one is, I'm sorry, Patrick. I'm, <laughs> I should have wrote okay. this down. But huh? so this motion um, would be like the changes. So the modifications themselves. Yeah, exactly. Okay. To approve the modifications as set forth provided by the plans of the uh, from the petitioner. We have a second. Second motion. A roll call. Chairman Perrin? Approve. Member Peck? Uh, approve. Member Callahan? Approve with prior condition. Member McCarthy? Approve. Member Briere? Approval. Member Jamina? Approved. Okay. Uh, approved. Three, Mr. Chairman, I'd like to make a motion on ZB 2017 6 for 1, uh, 5 7 East Merrimack Street for extension of the prior uh, granting of uh, site. Of a special permit. We have a second. A second motion, Mr. Chairman. We have a roll call. Chairman Perrin. Approved. Member Peck. Uh, approved. Member Callahan. Again, approved with condition. Member McCarthy. Approved with condition. Member Briere. Approved with conditions. Member Jamina. Approved. So we have an approved. We, thank you we, so much. We thank you for your uh, detailed plan and we wish you the best of luck. Right, thank you very much, everyone. Forward. Have a good evening. Have a good evening. Moving forward under other business, we have minutes for approval for December 10th, 2018. All members had an opportunity to review those minutes. Any modifications? Uh, I wasn't here on that uh, that meeting, and I didn't review it on the online, so uh, I would have to abstain, I think, right? Would that be it, Patrick? Yeah, if you weren't present, correct. Yeah. Okay, or I'll answer, I'm present today. Right. But, yeah. <laughs> we have a motion to accept the minutes. Uh, through you, Mr. Chairman, um, yeah. I make a motion to accept the minutes. We have a second. Second motion. Roll call. Chairman Perrin. Approve the minutes. Member Peck. Uh, approve the minutes. Member Callahan. Present. Member McCarthy. Approve the minutes. Member Briere. Approved. Member Jamina. Approved. Minutes have been approved for the record. I have a motion to adjourn. Through you, Mr. Chairman, I can make a motion to adjourn. Second. A second the motion. Meeting adjourned. Thank you.